Today on The Real. You in my house, so let's get real. Rachel Dolezal. The former NAACP president sets the record straight. White isn't a race, it's a state of mind. So you walk to walk with a black woman? Let me tell you something, I'm black. I can't be you. And nothing is off limits. Are you ashamed of being white? The Real. Dressed up as some fly girls. Did y'all enjoy that? Oh yes. my God. Yes. Yes. So it was much so fun. So uber duper fun. That was fun. So much fun. Well, let me tell y'all something. That actual flying part was scarred. Yes, it was. <laughs> Woo, I ain't got time for that. Well, y'all didn't see this at home because we put on our professional faces, but check out our rehearsal. Oh, God. Oh, no. by now, and we ask you at home if there's any questions you'd like to ask us, right? Yes, mm -hmm. you wrote in on our Facebook, and 16 of your questions we're going to put on our girl chat wheel. Yes. <laughs> excited. And I'm over excited because a lucky audience member will spin the wheel, and when it lands on a number, I'll open it up to the corresponding card with the topic to talk about. Hopefully Damn. it's real good tee hee hee though. Yes, okay. I'm ready. And as usual, here's the catch. We don't know the topics. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I need somebody in our audience to spin this wheel right chair, OK? Oh, God. So I'm going to pick a name out of the bowl, and when I call your name, come on down. Yay! but we don't know where you're from. I am from Johnson City, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. East Coast, yeah. East Coast. Yeah. All right, right. right. from Johnson City, Tennessee. Go have a seat and spin this heel, honey, because we're ready for this first topic. <laughs> I'm prepared. Yes. I love this. Go for it. Yes. Give it a good one. Let's go. Tam. Well, read. you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead, get your line. <laughs> okay. This is from Psychia Mazel from Cambridge, Maryland. Okay. Psychia, hello. She watches us on Fox 21 Del oh, Marva. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yay. Thank you for watching, Psychia. This is a good question. It is. Yes. What are your views on open relationships? Oh, I have, I have opinions Me on this. Me too. Okay, Adrian. <laughs> Which one of us is that? <laughs> okay, I think they can work. What? Really? Mm -hmm. I think they can work. Ooh. I think there are people that make it work. Mm -hmm. I could never make one work because I actually want to be 
in love with the person I'm with. Yes. And I think it absolutely works if you both love each other, but aren't in love with each other. Really? So let me because do it the together moment, then. No, the yeah. moment that I'm in love with you, the idea of you being with someone else is going to piss me off. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to control my emotions, my feelings, because I'm in love with you. There's emotions there that won't allow me to be like, oh, you're going on a date with that girl tonight, we'll have fun, sweetie. I'm sorry, no. we well, do that at? Right. Yeah. There's a difference between an open relationship and a marriage. A committed when you relationship. you give your vows to one person, that one person that you promised your life to, uh, till death do us part, that is for one person, Ooh, pick I me. think. All right. So it's, it's hard to look like you could share that. Honestly, I, I know people that say they have it, okay. but you know what I mean? But we know really what's going on. One person probably wants to get out the relationship. Just get out, just get but out. But no, because they want to, the other person it's usually wants to hold on. Have your cake and eat it too. And sometimes right. there's children involved. Exactly. Many yeah, you know how to stop telling my sisters no business. <laughs> but <laughs> she told it herself. I don't know if y'all seen Braxton Family Values seen season one. Tawanda had said to her and her husband, <gasps> had an open relationship, and I was really? just like, well, what that mean? And what did she say? And she say? was like, you know, we have kids, and it's important for us. I don't want to be mad at me. You spilled the tea, not me. I'm just repeating it. <laughs> um, you know, we have kids, and um, we don't really know what we want to do, and it's very important for us to have a stable family. Um, Home unit. Yes, for our kids, and, you know, while we're trying to figure things out, this is what we do. But that, to me, I think the ultimate goal of being parents and being in a relationship is showing that to your kids, right. teaching them about commitment, teaching them about, you know, just, just being together and, and, and loving just that one well, maybe, person. No, not really. Not if you can't successfully do that. Then just get out! What is the difference between an open relationship and, like, let's say, swingers? I think oh, it's that's the, the, same, same, isn't thing. the same thing. No, because sometimes an open relationship, you're having a whole nother relationship with another person. Swingers, so they, just, okay, like, I'm, I'm not an expert, okay? <laughs> right, right. They just want to experience. Ah! It's but just like a one night, you know, it's like a party type thing. It. Yeah, you kicking it. Yeah, it's, it's based on, on it's, it's a sexually based relationship versus. Right. Fulfilling right. sexual fantasies. Right. right. Or it could with be a other party. With other yeah, y'all y'all turn, y'all swing, y'all, you know. Wait, it. what? Yeah. So, so wait, do you swing to swing with other me? people, but they're not allowed to have a relationship? They can't go to the right. movies with that person. Right, right. So uh, whereas the open relationship, you could still be they... with a whole nother relationship okay. with another person. That's yeah, all it is. This would try do they like switch that. partners? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's no, it, what they call or is it a swing. big, like, it could be all no, of that. No, that's a different. We're not going to go there. That's okay, different. Okay, I'm just trying okay. to understand. It could actually, it could be all of that. It could be all of that. It could be all of that. I don't know nothing about that. I you know, Spin it! Spin it! No. It ain't gonna work. Sherelle wants to know, how long should you wait before introducing your kids to someone new? Oh, that's a good question. That's actually a very good question. I, I, I have experience with this. You have, you know. okay. Do. Well, do What's share. the ideal amount of time, I don't Adrian? have kids, but you guys know, I was with somebody that did have kids, and yes. I think it's very respectable when you see that someone takes time to protect their children. I think mm -hmm. as, as uh, the other person, you can get annoyed and be like, well, why haven't I met them yet? I think it's actually something that we should applaud when someone takes time to protect their Whoa, child. Hold on, hold on, how long is the time now? I, I think three to four months when you've actually really gotten to know the, mm, even then you really don't know no. I think longer. It, yeah, I, I think until I you realize like five that it's months. The, I think until you realize that it's serious. Damn. Correct. That's when you should yeah. introduce. It depends on what that is. Yeah. It depends on the age too. Yeah. 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 Because when they're smaller, I don't like them because you know, I'm Auntie Lonnie and it, you know, they'll get attached. So I say, oh, I don't yeah, like kids to love you, Lon. Yeah, yeah, but if they're a little older, you know, then you know, I would say maybe six months. I think if they're really young, give it like a year to uh, until yeah. y'all know y'all really but serious. I think six months is like a really good amount of time to say, you know, this is someone I really want to be with, and that's why I want. But I have now a concern the if, if they do it too soon because you should spend time with your kids. You shouldn't be worrying about what's over here, especially sure. if they're young. You know what I mean? Right. So no, I disagree. 
I disagree. I think that actually children that are younger adapt quicker to a new person in their life. But I mean introducing them, the well, time to introduce them. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be time. like you meet them in a month and then it's like, yeah, oh, no, you don't here. want your kids meeting multiple people. Exactly. Like, like, oh, they met six girlfriends of mine. They like that one and then that one goes away. Then they like that one and that one goes away. Okay. You want to make but, sure it's locked in. You don't want them to be confused. I just have a question because I remember when I was single and I used to have like, you know, boyfriends with baby mothers and yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. So the question is this, what if, right, you kicking it with somebody and you get serious a little fast. Yeah. Now, I, how, how I'm going to get connected with your child in a month and you trying to marry me? How is that going to work? Wait, who, what? Who, I mean, I'm just saying, we're kicking it three, Some four people months. Some people follow up. You're in your late 30s. you in your late 40s. you in 40s. I'm like, well, boo-boo, what we doing here? And that's like six months I went by. Now you're trying to marry me, and now you're trying to have me to connect with your child in like a month. Like, what we doing? Oh, I get what you're saying. Okay. But do you, think that, do you think that you should also equally give as much time that you took with the man to get to know his children Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. A little okay. long. It depends so on the kids have gone. So then that would be the answer, right? right? Like yeah. if you so let's say six, six months, months and then you take another man. six months, then you've dated now for a year and now you're getting married. Because that actually, you got that you got to consider that's now your family if you move to that you're point. You're marrying so that it, kid too. Right. It needs to be a substantial amount of time for both the man and the family. Absolutely. Well, I like for them to have kids so I can spend some other time with the other one. So you that's what? what I say. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you just go over there. This your weekend. Bye. You know, that's it. That, that's it. When you it's single, true. that's what happens, okay? Because they got their kids that can't come see you. Exactly. So you can do something Every other up. weekend. That's it. What is you know? wrong with her? That's <laughs> Lonnie. You work with their schedule every other weekend. Exactly. It is number 12. Number 12. 12. Okay. Thanks, Lonnie. Okay. This is... Fatika Percent from Alorton, Illinois. Hi, Fatika. Hi. Who watches us on KPLR 11. Yeah! <laughs> and she would like to know, who is your alter ego? Mine is Bonnie Besos. And you guys have seen her on my Instagram. <laughs> Anytime I wear red lips, yeah. I feel like my name should be Bonnie Besos. Oh my Bonnie oh. Besos. And it makes me feel extra like Latina. I swear I'm Selena in that moment. <laughs> and I just feel really flirty and sexy. She oh. really lives, huh? Uh, she lives. Bonnie that. Besos. Yeah. Bonnie Viva Besos. Bonnie Besos. That's awesome. <laughs> Viva Bonnie Besos. Bonnie Besos. What about you, Bonnie? Mine is Detroit Debbie. That's yeah. who I am, all right? Y'all to see Detroit Debbie when she get mad. Yes, okay. God. How? The D come out, okay? You're Usually right. when I'm in a bar and I've had a little too much to drink. <laughs> but yes. you know what? She's got spirit. She's yeah. got yes. spunk. Yeah. You know, and she just, she believes in life. And that's what I get that. So I gave her a name. When yeah. I get spirited like yes. that, I'm like, okay, I got to give her a name. And everybody should have a name when they feel a little bit different outside mm -hmm. of themselves. Mm -hmm. So mine's is Detroit Dead because I'm from the D. Yo, okay. <laughs> Let her look. Okay. All right, Sam, who? You got one? Me? Well, I have to say, when I wear all black, it has to be like a black pantsuit uh -huh. with, like you, Adrian, with the red, red lip, lip, but my hair has to be like slicked back in yeah. a ponytail. Yeah. I am vivacious Veronica. Ooh. Ooh. Anika. Ooh. Hey, Anika, very sexy, very powerful. Cause y'all know in real life, I'm very Ooh. laid back. I hardly wear any makeup, but this woman, you know, she's a go-getter. She's goal-oriented. She gets whatever she wants. Nice. Oh, yeah. I have to say mine is PJ Squared. It's pre, <laughs> yeah, uh-oh, pre-Jesus Genie. Here's okay. why. I got saved when I was about. <laughs> what? What are you guys laughing about? What? We know where you're going what? with this. What? what? Yeah, I know. Pre-Jesus yeah. Genie? Yeah. Oh, we oh, know. you do? Well, yes, she was a thot. Genie. Go ahead. She you was were a thot. Yes. We know you, no, Genie. No, you guys. It's, it's, it's weird. Sinning. I had a weird. Like, the things I did when I didn't know God and I didn't have a spiritual connection and I didn't know the purpose, I was real different than the genie you have today. <laughs> so, so, because, like, now I'm really proud that I'm a Christian because I need that prayer. <laughs> I need that connection. I need that light because I, I just, when I turn up, I do have a little bit of fun, but I always come running back to the Lord, you know, just yeah. to, like... Clean me. Yeah, turn up is <laughs> real, okay, It's good. You know, but when you come, when you've come from like other sides, when you've seen the other side of yourself, when you didn't have a purpose, I don't know. You can always channel it because it's always in you. Wow. Yeah. But but you always just come out like 
a nude. You know, okay. that's, okay. that's okay. a different yeah. thing. Don't, don't, don't go there too often. Yeah. PJJ. PJ squared. PJ squared. PJ squared, PJ oh. PJ PJ squared, squared works. Like What's your one? Bonnie Besso. Bonnie Besso. Detroit Debbie. Detroit Debbie. Vivacious Veronica. Vi oh, okay. These are all strippers you can find at the real strip club. <laughs> Y'all better come oh, through with that. Who's yours, TK? Well, who is yours? Knows. Mine is Tink. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. What does yes, Tink do? You know, I mean, she's really like <laughs> the ratchet, <laughs> unsafe, <laughs> freakazoid <laughs> version of Tinkerbell. Okay. Yeah, she's okay. Yeah. She's like ratchet, ratchet berry. berry. Like that. Okay. okay. But Tink. <laughs> she sounds fun. I like her. She bombed. She was cute. Yeah. Yeah, she I like Baca like Martini. I like her. <laughs> Earlier this summer, college instructor, artist, and Spokane NAACP chapter president, Rachel Dulezal was accused of pretending to be black. With her identity in question, Dulezal's life soon spiraled out of control. The controversy about Rachel Dulezal's race gained national attention in June. Though born to Caucasian parents, Dulezal self-identifies as black. This discrepancy soon went viral. And as the news about Dolajal spread, so did the judgment, with people accusing her of fraud, cultural appropriation, and even blackface. The media firestorm that followed was unrelentingly personal. Headlines questioned her work as an activist, an artist, a leader, an educator, diminishing the positive impact Dolajal has had through her life and career. We're now joined by Rachel Dolajal. Okay, Rachel. As a group of black and diverse women here, we definitely have some questions for you. Sure. So thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, really, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, from national headlines to trending on Twitter, there was a lot of strong reactions. How surprised were you about the way that people <clears throat> responded? Well, I think that um, certainly if a cross-cultural environment or a plural, multiple, poly um, experience is not your kind of personal daily, um, you know, life, then my, my life might seem odd to some. And I think, though, that there have also been a lot of people reaching out, and I've received a lot of warm responses from people who, with whom my life parallels. So... Uh, there's, you know, been kind of a mix of, mm. of response. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. But do you yourself feel like you've deceived anyone? No, I don't. I mean, I think, it, you know, don't we all have the right to be exactly who we are? When did you identify yourself as being black? When did you identify yourself? Just, it, was it a year? Was it when you were little? Was yeah. it, you know, when, when did you like say, I'm Rachel? Because we've all seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. You were born white, a beautiful little white girl, you know, Shirley Temple type, you know. And then all of a sudden you became black Rachel. When did that happen? Well, I have always seen myself as black since I was really young. Mm -hmm. And I have been identified by others as biracial, probably around 1998. And then since about 2006, I have um, self-identified as black. Got it. Now, this is my, my other question. Because um, you're in my house, okay? So let's get real, all right? Let's, let's just get real. Let's stop all this. this is real. We're just trying to figure this out so that understand. people can understand where yeah. you're coming from. Because mm -hmm. there were some people that felt that you never identified yourself as white. So like when you went to Howard University, some people felt like they never knew you were white, you were black. And so they felt like maybe the scholarship or when you, the, you, know, when you got admitted to Howard, that took an opportunity from a black woman. So that's why a lot of people, it's like we, you can identify for well, sure. you're beautiful, but we're trying to understand <clears throat> why in some instances, yeah. you never told people that, that you, you were, were white. white. Yeah. I mean, it, are you ashamed of being white? Well, like Dick Gregory says, white isn't a race, it's a state of mind. Okay, but you know, but no, no, let me tell you something. I'm black. I can't be you. I can't reverse myself. Right. I, let me tell you, Rachel, if That's the police exactly got the me, the police got me, 
You you could th you could throw that off and show that little like nice fine hair up under, and you might get away. I may not. I may not even make it in the jail. Well, so it's a difference. Okay. It's a big difference. Well, Rachel, mm -hmm. following that, I have a question. Right. What does what does being black mean to you? And why 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 do you want to be black? Well, I think that you know sometimes how we feel is more powerful than how we're born. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Um, blackness can be defined as philosophical, cultural, okay. biological, you know, there's yeah, a lot of different things, right. a lot of different people. And I think you do have to kind of like walk the walk if that's how, who you are. Okay. So. Yeah. so you feel that you walk the walk of a black woman? Absolutely. No. Okay. So, uh, go ahead, get your line. No, I just want to say, could you expand on that? Well, I mean, I think, you know, walking the walk in terms of philosophical and cultural, like what I was talking about as far as the broader definition, the pan-African definition of um, blackness. I think um, you're talking about then changing it to um, a black woman. Is there a singular experience? Uh, Is there one absolutely. experience? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are opportunities that I might not get that you can have only because of the color of my skin, not because I'm a smart, beautiful, amazing mother, wife, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know? Um, e even as successful as I am now, there are uh, lots of doors that I can't walk into that you can definitely walk into. So I just really want to know, like, have you, ex have you ever experienced anything like that? The police mark black on my traffic tickets. Wait, they what, they what? <laughs> no, I want to hear that, because I'm interested. You know, you get the B, the W, or the U. You know, the, the W is for white, the U is for unidentifiable, yeah. the B is for black. So it's all based on the police. Don't, when they pull you over, they don't say, "Are you black? Are you white?" You know, they they identify you. Now, wow. okay, um, you have compared your journey to Caitlyn Jenner's journey. So you know, you said there are similarities and there are differences, and you said that people, they you felt like people treat Caitlyn, you know, they're they're they accepting to her. her, but they're not accepting to you. Why do you think that? Well, I certainly applaud. Caitlin for discovering herself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I, again, you know, what does it mean to be a little different from your spouse or your children mm -hmm. and yet no less than 100% mother, 100% wife? Um, you know, are we all entitled to be exactly who we are? My question to you would be, what made you not say the, the biological, the, the... Your biological birth, birth, yes. birth race. race. Yes. yes. What so made you what not point? say that? I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, I've described to you a little bit of the timeline. For example, yeah. Howard University, there's no race designation on the application. Got it. I didn't, you know, fill out, check out, there are no boxes to check. Can I ask a question? Rachel, when mm -hmm. you mentioned that there weren't boxes of race to check in your applications, if there were, what would you have checked? When I went to Howard? Yes. Mm -hmm. I. I mean, there weren't, the, in, on the application, there weren't boxes. So. But if, but there, if were, there were a box. <laughs> if there were, if it said white, mm -hmm. Hispanic, black, Asian, or mm -hmm. other, what, what would you have picked? I, I think when it, when it comes to filling out forms, right, the, the form in particular usually defines things. So for example, on one of the forms that I um, filled out, which was called into question this summer, it, it said, uh, white, in parentheses, um, having European ancestry. Um, black, in parentheses, um, human populations originating in the continent of Africa. And, you know, Native American, it defined that. And it's like, okay, I teach, Af I, you know, I've been a professor of African history, black studies. Yeah, but which one black you check, though? So it's like, when it came, you know, yeah. I checked white and black because... We all have human origins in the continent of Africa. What is it about you saying I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm white, and I love you, and, 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 yeah. and, yeah. What's wrong with identifying how you, how you are, how you no. feel? I mean, you know, is biracial a category of blackness? Is you, that, biracial, you I'm can be biracial. You for I have, you, for I, you. To me, biracial, mm -hmm. it is what it is. I'm half white, and I'm half black. Right. And that's what I am. Like, my, my niece is biracial. She is half white and half Filipino. Mm -hmm. I own that. I own that. Right. However, I love that. I love being biracial. However, I, I identify with, with, being, with being black. 
So I'm, I'm owning who I am, but I'm identifying as, as, as something else. It all, it all goes hand in hand, but, but I'm, proud of, I'm proud of who I was born to, to be. Does that make sense? If you, we're being honest. You don't answer the questions. It came across as you lying and saying you were a race that you weren't. Am I correct? And I Would think, you agree? You know, with that? a headline, a single headline yeah. can change. A but even life. now, sitting here asking you, we're saying, why not say you're white, but you identify as being black, and you you don't seem to answer the question straight on. My my question yeah. to you is, why not identify how you identify? Like, why not? give me the right to identify how I identify. I give everybody else the, the same, you know. And we are all entitled to be exactly. Correct. exactly who we are and to identify Rachel, as Rachel, got it. Yeah. Rachel, I think it's kind of hard because you're not black. So when you identify with it, there's a disconnect. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, you weren't born black. So when you say you are black, it makes it hard for people to understand where you're coming from. Right, and that's why I said I, I acknowledge I'm, yes. I was biologically born white to right. white parents. Yeah. And yeah. I identify, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 right, yeah. but I identify as black, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it, that's it. Time. Yeah. 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 They just yeah. feel like yeah. they just want to hear the truth. And yeah. I think that, that that, people just want to hear the, the truth. And if you can admit right. that, then I think people would embrace you with open arms and be like, just now. So, so dope. I was born to white parents, just keep it real and say, I was born to white parents, but girl, I feel in my soul like I'm black, I'm right. And we'd be like, all right, dope, well, okay, that's cool. So Rachel, I'm really excited for you right now. I just yeah. wanna know, what would, you said that was a headline who said that, what would your headline be right yeah. now? Yeah. My headline right now? Yes, you call yeah. your shot, girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm talking about motherhood. You know, my headline is my, my sons right now. I've been spending a lot of time focusing on them. It's been a rough journey through the summer and also my sister, you know? So it's, it's really um, about kind of, like I said, regrouping, reassessing, and hopefully I'll get back to all that very committed work that I was doing as an yes. artist, yes. activist, and educator. Right. It all, you know, ended. Yeah. So what actually is next for you with your with your artwork? Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Yes, it is. What are you working on now, and what do you hope to do with right. it in the future? Well, I actually created a small gift for all of you. Really? You did. <laughs> you yeah. did. Yes. Your yeah. art is um, stunning. So I worked on that this last week. But okay. moving forward to the new year, um, I, I really plan to continue that multifaceted work. So it's not, I'm not just an artist or just a, an activist or just an educator mm -hmm. or just a mother. You know, like I'm all of that. And we know this year has had a really bright moment for you mm -hmm. because you are pregnant. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the baby's black, huh? Hey! <laughs> Don't and make it me it is that. <laughs> I want to be black. Me too. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, I, great I say, show. I said it white, black, <laughs> men, women, you know? Uh, like, okay. I'm okay. 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 I missed it. I missed you. it. What did, did you say? say? I missed it. it. Say it again. But if you. Oh, I said I said I've dated you know white, black men, women. You know I don't okay. discriminate. And I fall in love with people's want souls. You to know okay. This. So okay. I want you to okay. know this. That I think that when you say things like that, humanize. It humanizes yes. you. It yes. makes people. It makes you likable, and you can say, okay, I get it. Even just saying. Yes, I was born to, and the, the whole audience stood mm -hmm. up and applauded you. Like we had a breakthrough moment. Yes, yes we did. Because it was, it's just it was those honest. little things that make you feel honest and real and connected. You know, I have to honestly say, I was nervous about doing this interview. I was angry at you. Um, but now I understand a little bit more. There's still some things that I have to grow up about and process. And I think I ask that our viewers also understand and grow up and understand you and open up the minds too. Absolutely. So thank you very much for being here. Final Rachel, thank you so much for sharing this story with us on the world. You know we love our fans almost as much as we love giving them the chance to win some real cash money. So today we're testing their knowledge of the real in the biggest way ever. We've upped this stakes, and this time, you guys, there's $750 on the line. That's right, you guys. Things are looking up in our mega down to the wire. <laughs> All right, here's how we play. We'll quiz our lucky fan on things we've said or done on the show this season. 
and then the more questions they get right, the more money they win. Each question is worth a different dollar amount, and in total, they can win up to $750. What? How awesome is that? Awesome. But here's the catch, folks. With every question, they'll get less and less time to answer. So all we need now is our super fan. Jeannie, who's it gonna be? All right, Aid. <laughs> Mia Hayes, where are you at? <laughs> Mia! <laughs> our super fan. All right, so, are you ready to do this? Yeah. Okay, here's how it's gonna work, okay? For this first question, you're gonna have 10 seconds to answer. If you get it right, we give you $25. Okay. Are you ready to do this? Yes. Are you ready? Okay. okay, the clock starts once I finish the question. 10 seconds on the clock, please. Okay. Nia, what is the name of our signature game where contestants have to spot the real from the knockoff? Make it or take it. You got it! Go <laughs> down. Okay, hi! Hi! Okay, for this question, you have seven seconds to answer, and it's worth $50. Oof. All right, you ready? Let me get ready. <laughs> All right, which former Real Housewives of Atlanta star co-hosted the show this season? Mimi Lee. Yes! Woo! All right. Okay, the next question is worth $75. You only have five seconds to answer. You ready? Okay. Listen up. Whose husband made a surprise appearance in our Dream Lovers fashion show? Samara. What's his name? Adam. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, okay, okay. Good job. This question is worth $100, Ooh. but you only have three seconds to answer it, okay? Okay. Who was the guest on our show that I told to go home, Roger. Marcus Houston. Yes! Wow! Wow! wow. That is awesome! <laughs> okay, you ready? Because this is the major one. This is the bonus question. Okay, you have $250 so far. It's really good, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, you'll have three seconds to answer this. The difference is this question is worth $500. Money. So here's for the big bucks, folks. What, what song did Tamar perform on the show this season from her album, Calling All Lovers? King. Yeah! compliments on the fashions we wear on the show. Thank you so much, everybody. And most of you think that everything we wear has a designer price tag attached to it. Guess what? Not so much. So today we're showing you how to get some of our favorite looks on a dime. Woo! Step into our wardrobe. This is how to get the real looks for less. Woo! I love it. Okay, let's start with me. I'm a huge believer in using your style to express yourself. So with my look, I like to mix a little like basic shirt with like a fun and sassy skirt, just like you see here. Yep. So are you guys ready to see how you can get this look for less? Here it comes. Oh, wow. Yay. That was great. Oh my gosh. So I love this skirt, you guys, because it gives off a sheer sexy vibe without like showing too much, you know? And with this look, I promise you're not gonna break the bank. My model is wearing the exact shirt that I had on in the photo, you guys. It's only $25 from ASOS, one of my favorite sites online. Oh, Shout out to myself, ASOS. yeah, love. And they deliver so quick and you can return easily. And the skirt, you guys, $30 from Charlotte Russe. Wow. Does she look great? Yes, all right, my turn. Now it's important for a woman to know how to compliment her best features. And not only should you look good, you should be comfortable as well. Here's how to get my look for less. Solid 
a color like this one, make sure you pop it with a little fun shoe. Her dress is $35, and it's the exact same dress I wore in the photo from Macy's. And her shoes are $50 from Nordstrom's Rack. Love it! Yay, she's gorgeous. That's a good color. All right, now with my style, sometimes I like to tone it down, you know, play a little cool. But I also <laughs> like a little pizzazz from time to time. So here's how to look like me for last. It's pleather, you guys. The skirt is pleather. Now, her version of my outfit is affordable, too. The top is the exact same top that I wore in the photo, and it's only 20 bucks from Topshop, you guys. Love it. And the skirt is 40 bucks from Zara. I like that look. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much, great. girl. You look great. I love that look. That was so easy and fun. Okay, you guys, I may be a mommy, but guess what? I still love to show up and show out, and I do that with my fashion. Here's how you can get my style for less. <laughs> my model is wearing a classic look, but she's still sexy at the same time. Oh! Everyone needs a good blazer in their closet, and the one she's rocking is the exact one I'm rocking in the photo. You guys, it's only $30 wow. from H&M, wow. and the shoes are $40 from Nordstrom Rack. Wow. You look How great. Awesome is that? Thank you.